Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this spline tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a custom path animation. You can do a custom animation like this for any type of line art. In this example, I'm going to show you how I was able to pull in a simple word like Wiki, create it as a line art inside Illustrator, and how to import that into spline and then animate it like that. So I'm going to show you step by step on how I was able to pull that off. Here we are inside Illustrator and I wanted to show you exactly how you take your line art like this and then you got to save it out as an SVG and then import it into Spline. So in order to make this work, what I realized is once you create your path, you can see right here that your path is just one continuous line. So this type of animation is going to work best if you just connect all of your lines together. So like cursive. Now what you got to do is once you have your path selected right here, right up here where it says uh, your brush definition, you need to make sure this says basic. So when you do that, it's gonna remove any type of stroke that you kind of already have. So this is what you're gonna wanna have it look like in order to save this out and import it into Spline. So now you just go ahead up into file, export, export as. Now we're just gonna select SVG right here and I'm just gonna call it something like test wiki stroke I've already done this 13 times, so now you can see export as 13. Then what you're going to want to do is you can just keep all of these options right here. This is pretty standard, so just hit OK. So now that's going to be saved out as an SVG. Now let's jump into Spline and show you how to import that in. And here we are on the home page when you get into your Spline interface. The good thing is, is if you want this type of look where you can have a color background, in a nice little hotspot right here. They kind of already have that set up. So what we can do is just use a template and then we can just add our own line art to it. So if you click under library, you'll see underneath 3D paths. You can click this one right here, 3D paths candy land, or what is it called? Candy letter, sorry. <laughs> so once you do that, it's gonna pull in these two uh, line arts. So you can see it's kind of very similar to what we're already creating. But let's go ahead and just delete these two. And then now we're going to import our SVG that we just created. So let's go ahead and just select those, delete, and delete. Now you can just click the import button right down here in the bottom left. Once you click that, you can select your SVG right here and then click open. So when you do that, you're going to realize that this does not look correct. So the very first thing is let's go ahead and just move this over a little bit so this is more centered to how the other ones kind of were lined up. So this right here is importing how that SVG looks like when it's filled. That's the complete opposite of what we want. So what you can do is underneath my layers right here, uh, for some reason it creates a empty path called zero, so shape zero. So I can just go ahead and delete that. But in this case, uh, this all line, all the line art is just on one thing called uh, shape one. So you just click that and this button right here says convert to path. This is where all the magic is going to happen. So once you click that, that's it. Now this has been converted into a path and now inside spline, you can go ahead and start to edit these points and fix any type of overlapping and stuff like that. But let's go ahead and add a texture to it so we can kind of visually see where the overlapping is kind of, you know, messing up. And to add a material, you're just going to want to stay on the path that you're on. Go down here where it says material. You can click these four little dots and that's going to bring up the library for all the different materials that Spline already has. They have a lot of good ones to kind of start out from. So in this tutorial, let's just stick with like a metal one. And if you see right here where it says Spline library, they have tons of them right here. But, you know, depend on your use case, select whatever you think is going to work. But I figured... Um, there's one called noise four is what I believe I used. So when you click that, it's going to take a second. Now you're going to see, you see all of these like weird shapes. That's because your meshes are like overlapping everything. So if you want to kind of see what's happening behind the scenes, while that uh, path is selected where it says wireframe show, it will just take a second. Once you click that, you're going to see this is what's happening. Here's your wireframe. So you've got all these like weird points that come to a, you know, like to a point and then they don't come down. So what we can do is go to each one of these and kind of tighten it up and maybe move a lot of these so they're on top of each other. So they're actually three dimensional. So let me show you how easy that is to pull off. So go back to hide under wireframe and let's go ahead just each one of these and let's just fix it as we go. In order to edit these points, let's just go up back up into here. Uh, while that's selected, just click edit path. So now you're gonna get a few different tools up here to be able to edit all of your points. 
So what I like to do is go to front view. I just click the blue button down here in the gizmo and that's gonna pull up. So now what we can do is I'm gonna leave the two N1s for last because those are called caps, but any one of these things in the middle, let's go ahead and tighten those up. The very first one in this situation, they have this bend tool. So this might work. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is click that. And when you click it, it's automatically gonna to start to bend that point. So you can see it's not overlapping as much. And then you can also use this arrow tool right here. Select that point, just kind of pull it off right here. Maybe you can go this one, move that over a little bit. You're going to have to sometimes change the camera view like this, move it a little bit. So that looks pretty good. Now we can go back into that bend tool up here. You can see that has two other points up here. So what we can do instead is let's select this point. That one needs to probably come out. So I'm holding Alt and clicking my mouse to pull that out. So now you can see that it's gonna now overlap correctly, like three dimensional. So now I can select that one and maybe push that back a tad. So now you can see a little bit of overlapping, but it doesn't look too bad anymore. And like I said, make sure you go to top view or your front view. And then I do recommend clicking the green button and there's your top view. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you don't have any points like this. Like if you have something like this, it might look okay in the front for some reason. Like it might look okay like at this angle, but if you have it way out, it's gonna look, you know, it's not gonna render out correctly. So you're gonna to have to keep switching between front and top view. So now let's go ahead and change out. Uh, that's like the I. We can go into the C, same thing. Let's pull that out a little bit. Let's get that point push that back and now you can you can kind of see which points it is you know when I go like this it's gonna look a lot better go like that and then this right here let's maybe do the bend tool actually and let's see if that helps so if you want it to be more like that that could look pretty good you know just kind of a quick example so you could zoom out so you can see W I looks like a C the K's have these weird points up here. So whenever you get that, you could just bend it up, bend these points. So now the K looks more rounded. It looks pretty cool. It looks like a balloon almost at this point. So now you can go same thing here, bend these points, bend those points, just kind of make it where it's not so pointy, of course. So once you're happy with that, you can just click edit edition, and then that's gonna automatically bring you back where you can change all of your different settings. Now what we need to do is, actually I missed that W, so let's go ahead and hit Edit Path. Let's go back into that W, and I forgot to do that one. Okay, so that's rounded, rounded. Let me just kind of go through. Everything looks pretty good right here. So that's it. Once you click that, now what you can do is underneath Caps, if you click Round, if you see what happened, there's two caps, one right down here in the Y and then the W. So when it looks like that, it's going to be flat, but now you can click round and it will go round. Now, depending on your use case, you might not want to use shape circle. So it's rounded because I'm using a circle, but you can also use rectangle. So let me change that. It looks like a square. They have a polygon. They have a star, which is kind of cool. And then I'm not going to cover it in this tutorial, but you can do a custom shape. So if you had something very custom, you can animate it on a custom path, which is really cool. So let's just go back to caps, do rounded, and you can see right here, when you start to increase, do it until it starts to look pretty good. So in this case, uh, I believe 64 is as high as it goes. So that looks pretty good. So you can see right here, it just kind of bevels it out. And then you can also change it if you want it to be more round. For some reason, you wanna to go to a point, but in this case, you probably wanna keep it at like 10. So now everything has a rounded corner. Now let's go to front view, make sure everything looks good. It looks pretty good for now. Top view, like I said, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you don't have any of your points like hanging out way back here. So that's how you import your line art from Illustrator. Now I'm gonna show you a quick example of how you can trace over uh, line art like that inside the program itself, inside Spline, instead of having to import it. So let me go ahead and show you exactly how that works and some of its limitations. And as you can see right here, I just have this uh, line art that I created. Uh, I just converted this into like a JPEG. Now we can import this into Spline. I'll show you how you can use their tool to trace it out and kind of go from there. So if you want to stay inside the same file, or if we're going to start from scratch, what I'm going to do is just click import and import that JPEG in. 
as you can see right here, I dropped it in here. Now let's go ahead and move this way over here so we're not overlapping anything like that. Okay, so now that's brought in, and if for some reason it comes in, you might need to rotate it like this. So depending on how you have it. So over here it says rotation on the Y. I'm able to just keep this at zero and it works well. Now what you could do is go up here where the plus uh, icon is and select path. Once you do that, you're going to want to go ahead and just select where you want to start. So let's start with the W and I'll quickly show you like how this works. So just like the tools we had before, you have an arrow tool, you get the pen tool and like the bend. So in order to do this, you're just going to click and drag where you want your path to go. So as you can see, this is going to be way too big. So what we need to do is underneath path extrusion, just change that size to something that is a little more manageable. So something like 24 or something like that is pretty good. So the major limitation I found, because um, I've been using the pen tool inside Illustrator and Photoshop for years, is you have to keep switching in between these two little tools in order to pull these anchors correctly. So in this case, you can see I have this anchor too low and you can't stay on side this and actually like modify that. So what you're going to have to do is click the arrow button and if you need to click and drag that around, you can see that's how you pull your anchors. So that's the major limitation is you need to kind of go back and forth. So it takes twice as long to do anything. So if I wanted to go up here to the W, you can see I have to go here, change that, move this up probably. That's going to be rounded. Go back into here, select like another point down here. So yeah, you can see right here, like it takes so much longer. Um, so I'm just going to kind of do the first letter. I'm not going to do all the letters. It's going to take forever. And you can see if I go right here, you need to kind of move this around, move this up here. So yeah, you can see I have a W now. So now I'm going to show you how easy it is to draw it on or animate it. So let's go ahead and actually go back to this one right here. And I'm just going to delete the ones I just created so you can exit out of here. Let me delete this one. Okay, so now we're back to the original one that we just created. So in order to animate this, it's very easy. What you need to do is go back into your shape file right here. And right here it says depth, you can see it's 1. So that's basically 100%. So you can see right here if it's at 0 and you move this slider right here, it's going to animate it. So you, that's the type of animation you're probably going to want. So in order to do this, when it's you know when you click play, you actually do that. What you need to do is make sure it's at zero, and go up here where it says states. Just click this plus button. So now we have a base state and a regular state. So you can call this whatever you want, but in this case, let's just keep it at base and state. First thing is let's go ahead underneath your base state that is at zero for depth, and all you have to do is click the word state. Now just change that to 100. Go underneath events, click this plus button and clicked transition right here. So this is going to transition from this state to that state. So once you click that, you're going to make sure your target is on the shape one. Let's go to base state to regular state. Let's do it for like five seconds. And now when you hit play, it should animate like this all the way down in five seconds. And five. So that's about five seconds right there. And if you ever need to edit these states and how long it is, you can just always go back into your events here change the ease and out if you want you could they give you a lot of cool different settings right here but this is a very simple tutorial this is how you can do it in just five seconds and that's it for the spline tutorial so what i plan on doing in 2024 is creating a lot more of these type of tutorials because i'm learning this tool and so i kind of want to learn with you guys so give me any sort of ideas that you might want to have for a future video and i'll see if i can make it inside spline i plan to make a lot of different videos this year so the more content the better on this tool Make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to this YouTube channel, hit that bell so you have notifications when I release new spline tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.